folder is not underneath something else. So I can just say dot, dot, go up to your parent, and there's no ambiguity. All right? A parent, on the other hand, can have many children underneath it. So if I'm in the root and I want to go down a folder, I have to specify which of the children folders I want to go down. So I have to specify the name. I talked about this in 216 class, but I think it's important to review. All right? Especially here because we're going to be a little more convoluted than we were in the 216 class. In the 216 class, typically, we just maybe had our files and an images folder, and then we just put images slash whatever. Or here we're going to be going up in this particular example. Um, okay. So we're back in business with that, pointing to the style sheets. Now let's actually make each of these things work. Um, let me rephrase that. Not work, but take advantage of the fact that we're doing mobile detection. All right. One thing we know is if we end up here, we're on a mobile device. Or we're on a desktop browser and a person is faking that they're on a mobile device. So we don't have to do any tests. They're just going to get the mobile stuff. All right. So I can go and I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of this. Now, let me ask you a question. Should I get rid of that? You could argue, depending on the mobile device, if the screen is big enough, I might want it to look like the desktop version. In this example, we're going to take the more straightforward route and say mobile is mobile, desktop is desktop. So we're not going to send the desktop any content. I'm sorry, we're not going to send the mobile or the desktop any content that isn't set for them. Um, I can go in and then I can get rid of the menu div. Why? Because I know on the drop down I only want the, or on the, the mobile version, I only want the drop down. So I can save that and copy it over. And we shouldn't really notice a difference. The only way we notice a difference is I do a view source here. The only difference is, is if we could do a view source here. I don't think you can. I tried. Yeah. I tried. If we could do a view source here, um, we would see that we did not send the bigger desktop version of the menu to this. We just didn't send it. Okay? Because our assumption is we want the mobile to look a certain way, and, and therefore it does. All right. Now, the flip side is true, too, at least in this example. If they're on a desktop, I can get rid of the drop-down div. Now, again, do I have to do that? Of course not. I'm doing this to illustrate a point. All right? You might argue that I still want that behavior when the window gets smaller to, to change the menu. So that's fine. I, I understand that. I'm doing this to illustrate a point because this is the most obvious content 
that I could think of that um, I would want different between the desktop and, and that. So, go and save that. This time I can view the source. And if I view the source, notice I only got the one menu now. I don't have two menus. In fact, I can fake out this and view it through the browser. So I can do the view source and type in mobile slash. And there's that. If I do a view source through this browser, I see I only have the drop down version of it. Now, again, in a way, it's unfortunate I took that functionality away because that functionality is pretty neat. All right. But I wanted to illustrate a point that document or that, that the document's content can actually be different in the mobile for that. In fact, that's one of the big reasons why you would do a separate site is if, if the, the content was uh, going to be drastically different. I think I forgot to change the JavaScript. That resizes it in the mobile version. So that's why the, the image is not showing up right. Yeah. do in here too. Let's say for example that we wanted to have more content about mobile sites on the desktop version. All right. Well, I could do this then. I could go in and go in here and I could simply add a section. Or add a paragraph, let's say. I am just for simplicity, I'm going to duplicate this a couple times. If we look, this is going to have more content than the mobile version. Notice how in the desktop version, there's two sites, or two paragraphs. Whereas in the mobile version, that paragraph's only once. So I can add more stuff in the desktop version, as opposed to the mobile version. Now, 
I can also start carving away and start making things into include files. All right? And that's another key point uh, in, in doing this. All right? What we would want to do is we would want to look at what the big blocks of the page are. And not just on this page, but on all the other pages. Now, for this exercise, I'm only doing the one page. Um, again, maybe we'll do a, a second page um, later on. But in looking at this, looks like there's a footer. Looks like there is a banner, and looks like there's a navigation. All right. So, which of these can I make into include files? I could probably make all of these into include files, except my navigation, I really don't have a common navigation between the two. All right. But I will have a common navigation amongst the mobile ones, and I'll have a common navigation amongst the desktop version of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a site-wide include file for this, both desktop and full version. I'm going to make a site-wide include file for the footer, and then I'm going to make a specific to desktop and mobile include file for the nav. Do you understand why I'm doing that? Okay. I'm doing that because the navigation is obviously drastically different between the two. So there's no benefit of having a common include file for the navigation that every page, whether it be mobile or desktop, uses. All right? However, I want all the desktop versions of my pages to have a certain nav, and I want all the mobile versions to have a certain other nav. So I want to keep those in common. But it's not common between the two. So I have two include files now. One for the desktop, one for the mobile. The other things, like this, it's going to be the same regardless. All right? I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to call them Dave in one place, David in another. All right? I'm going to keep those consistent. So I'll create one include file for this. Likewise, the header is roughly the same. And the only difference is I got the word mobile version, but, but we can take care of that problem. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder for includes, which I already did, all right? And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to take the header, I'm going to cut it out of there, I'm going to create a new file, Paste that into there, and I'm going to go and save this as an includes file, and I'm going to call it banner.inc. All right, so now that's called banner inc. So I can replace the banner in the include file or, or in the uh, desktop page with the, the include file. PHP include includes, that's the name of the folder, slash banner.inc. How did I know that? Well, here's a page I'm talking about. The include file goes down from this folder, which is a web server's root, to the includes directory. So I need to go and do that there. What's it going to be on the mobile version? What's the include file going to look like there? Is it still going to be includes banner.inc? No. Why not? Because I have a different starting point. My starting point is in mobile. So how do I get from mobile to that includes folder? 
I first have to go up to the root and then down to includes. So my syntax will be dot dot. That will take me from the mobile folder to the root folder then slash includes banner dot ink. So let's go and save this. And copy it all over. look what we have. <coughs> this is still working, right? Ooh, that's telling me the desktop version. Why did it tell me the desktop version? Well, because that's what I did when I made the include file. I cut the code from the desktop version and put it in there. Do I want it to say desktop version all the time? No, obviously I don't. I want it to say desktop version or mobile version. So, there's going to be a slight difference in the contents of this include file depending on whether it's desktop or mobile. Now, I have two choices here. All right, I can either make two include files, a mobile include for the banner and a desktop version of the banner include. Or, I could make this include file smart enough to know which I'm at and make the change correspondingly. All right? That's not a big difference. So, I'm going to put in a variable here. If I made it to this page, I'm in mobile land. I'm going to say dollar sign mobile equals true. Well, guess what? If I'm in the other one, then dollar sign mobile equals false. Since I declared that on the page, I can test that in the include file. Now that has to be PHP code though, right? Because there's no if statements or anything like that in HTML. Alright? So, I'll go PHP if dollar sign mobile I'm going to do this a little different than I've done it before. Just I don't know. Just to be contrary. use the echo command. What do you think the echo command does? Just display. Displays or it's it's or in other words in our case it sends to the browser. So why did I use the echo command here as you know other than just to be difficult and do things a different way? Because <coughs> Well, that explains it, right? Because. Because this one seems simpler to me to stay in PHP and just output the HTML tag that I wanted to as opposed to bouncing back and forth between PHP and HTML. Let me show you the code that would be equivalent, the PHP code that would be the equivalent of this but done in a different way.
All right. What is the difference between this code? Well, in one case, I'm bounce, bouncing back and forth between HTML and PHP. And I simply, where I want to display HTML, I just pop out a PHP and put my HTML tag. That requires me to bounce in and out of HTML and, and PHP, to bounce between HTML and PHP. In this case, though, I am staying in PHP the whole time. All right? So I couldn't put my HTML tag here because an HTML tag isn't PHP code. So I have to write the PHP command that outputs the HTML tag. And that's simply echo, and then within quotes you have the name of the tag. Which is a better way to do it? It doesn't matter. Do which way makes sense to you, which way is cleaner for you. Typically, what I will do is if I'm outputting just a teeny bit of HTML, like in this case I'm outputting one tag, I'm going to stay in PHP and use the echo to output the tag. If, if it's mobile, I'm going to display some big giant table of information where there's a whole bunch of HTML tags, then I'm going to pop out of PHP and just write the HTML. It'll be easier to do that. So I use echoes for a little bit of HTML. I pop out of PHP mode when I want to do a lot of HTML. <coughs> the bottom line is, as long as you get the work, you know, you can't really argue too strongly one way or another. But what should be your guide, again, is the readability of the code and the maintainability of it. In my mind, once you understand what the echo statement does, this code looks much more straightforward than this code. All right. Now let's make sure that any of this code even works. All right. Let's go and save this. Save all of them. And we'll go and copy all these over again. And we'll look at this. The desktop still says desktop. The mobile says mobile. So we're back to square one. Or back to where we were. So we've seen two ways of getting new content on the page. Right? Or getting different content. That is different content between HTML and CSS. Or, or between... Um, uh, losing my train of thought, between the mobile version and the desktop version. One way is we can just put that content in the page. All right. Second way we can do it is we can put include files in and put if statements in the include file to conditionally put some statements in there. I would take that approach when the difference between the include files was, again, fairly small. As we have a case for the navigation, I would put each of those into their own include file. So I would do I'd grab this nav and have this guy refer to the nav. And then all of its clones would refer to the nav. In other words, all the other pages on this site, I would make the corresponding change to. All right. And then for my mobile version, I'll go and... Copy this, 
make a new <coughs> file, paste that in, save it as mobile nav dot inc and then I point to that guy and again why did I put this in an include file? And specifically, why did I put this in two include files? I want to ensure consistency, but consistency so that all the desktop ones have the same nav and all the mobiles have the same nav, but they're different navs. And they're far enough different that I didn't think it would be worthwhile to just make one include file with a big if statement in it. So there wasn't a lot in common between this, between these two navs. So I went and just created separate include files. Now, I certainly could chop up this page into other include files. Um, the, you know, I could possibly put this content in an include file if I wanted. I definitely could put the footer in an include file. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to do this. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I'm describing one scenario of how it would work. I have a certain structure in mind, a certain folder structure. I wanted to do it to demonstrate some things. I wanted to have a separate mobile folder. I wouldn't have to do it that way. I could do it other ways if I wanted to. I could, for example, and I did an example of this in previous years. Maybe we'll look at doing one of these on Monday, but I had a directory structure that looked like this. Like, and simply style it differently. 